What's up everybody? In this video, I'm gonna be sharing with you all how I was introduced to psychedelics. And it's gonna be how I was introduced to psychedelics, not exactly taking them yet, but how I got to a point where I was like really interested in psychedelics and like knew that I'm gonna try these. I need to get my hands on this. So it was five years ago and I don't know like how the months add up whether it was 2016 or 2017 but and the same with the years I don't know what grade I was in I was either a freshman or a sophomore in high school and uh I'll add right off I was a stoner I smoked weed every day I, I like I smoked a lot of weed every single day so that was part of my like ego personality, you know, and before psychedelics, uh, which sort of coincided with being introduced to spirituality and psychology and that kind of stuff. Before all that, I didn't even know about like ego and persona and this is who I think I am. I was just completely adhered, one, dissolved into the ego and part of my ego I guess at the time was smoking weed lots of cannabis consumption and the reason I'm telling you this is because like I said I don't know if it was freshman or sophomore year but I made friends with someone who had moved from a school nearby to the school I was going to and we from the very first class we had together we completely hit it off. Like there was just a complete connection. And uh, I'll call him X, his, na his name was Xavier, but I'll just call him X. Um, it was, uh, I, I think it was freshman year because we had a freshman biology class together. And I remember it was our very first class together. And it was just like pretty much the first class of the year that I had in that class. And I was doing something with this paper. I think I was just rolling up this paper. And uh, I hear him say behind me, I could roll a fatty with that. Like referring to like a blunt or something like that. And I knew immediately like me and this kid were going to be friends. Just from the mutual connection of weed. So me and X became really close friends. We started hanging out after school and what we would do what do you, what do stoners do when they get out of school they get together and they smoke weed they get stoned so we would hang out we would plan to hang out after school like yeah i see you know what we're gonna do after school and we would raise hell in class and then at the end of the day we would get together and at the time uh what we would do is xavier's girlfriend would pick him up from school and i'd go with them and we would go to her house and upstairs in her house was what we all called the bakery, which was where all these, you know, all these people, Xavier's friends, his girlfriend's friends, would come over and we would all hang out, listen to music, play video games, smoke weed, you know, that classic chill sesh vibe, you know what I mean? And I had never been a part of that, you know. The farthest I got into that was like just like, hanging out with people and getting into trouble with the law because we're smoking weed in really stupid areas. Uh, but I didn't ever really have that vibe of like hanging out with a large amount of people at once, all hanging out together, talking, smoking weed, laughing, you know, making jokes. I, I, well, I, I didn't know that vibe. I wasn't familiar with that. So beginning to hang out with Xavier introduced me to that vibe. We would all go to the bakery get stoned out of our minds. I would usually ask him for a ride home, and if I couldn't get a ride home, I would just spend the night there. Um, and I felt like one of his like special friends, too, because everybody else would have to go home, but usually he'd be like, yeah, you can chill, man. You can stay here. And like I said, me and Xavier were really good friends. We just... He was, like, completely different than me, personality-wise, like interests and hobbies and the way he carries himself the music he listens to everything was like different but there was just this connection between us you know what i mean there was just something about 
him and I and our connection, we just, we felt really close. We felt like genuine friends together. And it's funny because we don't really talk much anymore, but I still feel it. I'm still like, we're still right there with each other. We just don't hang out often. So to get to the story, I was hanging out with Xavier a lot. And like I said, we would all be hanging out, listening to music. And the kind of music Xavier listened to in particular was rap music. That pop popular back then, still quite popular. But he listened to that all the time. And I wasn't super into that kind of music. And most certainly didn't know a lot of the artists and the kind of that, that vibe, that style of, and culture so he was introducing me to all sorts of different artists and music and types of music and I was adding it all to my playlist like he he like I was impressionable I guess in a sense because being introduced to his vibe was like I stuck right onto it and my vocabulary was changing my jokes and humor was changing the type of music I was listening to was changing so it was a very pivotal point of like my life I guess was meeting Xavier and becoming friends with him and one day in particular we were hanging out and he asked me hey have you ever heard of Chance the Rapper and you may know him now he got quite popular since the time back in 2016 or 2017 whenever it was he's gotten quite popular since then but at the time, I had not I had not heard of Chance the Rapper. So I was like, no, who's Chance the Rapper? And him and all his friends are like, what? Oh my God, you never heard of Chance the Rapper? Dude, I can't believe that. Yo, yo, cue up Chance the Rapper. We got to play this guy for him. Like, and they were going to put on Chance the Rapper and let me listen to him. So they put on music that was playing out of Chance the Rapper's album, which is called Acid Rap acid rap so I started listening to this music and like I said throughout the time of hanging out with him I started liking this style of music and when I heard Chance the Rapper man things were just going off in my mind first of all I loved it I fucking loved the songs out of that album acid rap I loved it so much the vibe, the style, the flow, the energy of it. It was all, it was really cool. And I still love listening to that music. But as I listened closer to the lyrics of these songs that Chance was making in this album, Acid Rap, I started to realize this guy, you know, in the name of the album and the lyrics in the song, I started to realize this guy is singing about using acid. LSD and talking about its effect on his love life and his mo and his creativity and his motivation and his passion for life and how trippy and crazy it is and and using it to enhance his rapping abilities and like it's all kind of metaphoric symbolically in there but the vibe of acid rap and the songs in there, I mean, the name says it itself, Acid Rap, completely imbued me with this mysterious vibe. I was like, this music's really cool, but, like, he's, he's on some shit. Like, he made me wonder, what is LSD? Because I'd heard of it, obviously. I knew, and I, that's another thing, is I didn't know much about it. I literally thought LSD, or I didn't even know LSD and acid were the same thing. I had heard of acid. I knew it was a hallucinogenic drug. I, but I literally thought acid was like battery acid. The stuff that oozes out of batteries and people were getting high off of it. I had no clue what it was. And I knew kind of of its ties to the counterculture in the 60s and hippies and all, a little bit of that stuff. Um, but I had didn't know what acid was and most certainly had never considered using it at the time and I remember the way I phrase it to myself is at that time in my life the what I did think to myself was 
if I were to ever trip, if, because I knew people who had, and I'd heard very little kind of here and there stuff about it, you know what I mean? I was like, if I ever do trip, I'll take shrooms, because, you know, shrooms are natural, and they're like weed, and it's really similar, and it's in nature, and I, I might take that at some point, but acid, no, I would never take that. That's fake, that's synthetic, I would never do that. So that was the vibe I had, up until listening to Chance the Rapper, because when I listened to him, like I was saying, this vibe just washed over me of like, what is acid? What is this LSD? And it's connection to love and the mind and creativity and passion for life and just this very mysterious vibe, you know? It really got me thinking of like, LSD, what is that? LSD, you know? I hear this guy Chance rapping all about it and he's just planted this seed of like, wonder. You know what I mean? You listen to the album and tell me if you get any of the same vibes. It was just this crazy vibe associated with it. That chant sort of invoked through it. You know what I mean? So after listening to that album, I don't know if I told Xavier about it or if I just kind of took it upon myself, but I started studying LSD. I started, and like that that was like the introduction to it right there that was the gates opening you know what i mean i began studying lsd and psychedelics for that matter and i was studying every single day i remember in study hall where you're supposed to be doing your homework and studying for tests and shit i was researching psychedelics i was researching lsd and mushrooms and what is lsd how does it affect the body you know and what what receptors does it affect in like mushrooms and psilocybin, the active ingredient in mushrooms. And of course, if you begin to study psychedelics, you inevitably get to the 50s, 60s, and 70s countercultural movement of psychedelics where they were sort of, they were just dropped on America like a bomb out of nowhere. And you know what happened. People were taking it and dro- dropping out of it you know timothy leary's turn on tune in turn on what the fuck is it turn on tune in drop out i think that's what it is and uh yeah i haven't phrased that to myself in a while but yeah as i'm researching these psychedelics i start to get pulled back to the 60s and like like research wise and i start learning about the counterculture and LSD and hippies and this, you know, I'm listening and reading trip reports and people's experiences with this stuff and the visuals and the feeling and it connecting you to your soul and um, ego death. Start learning about ego death and like all this stuff is just pouring. Like it felt like an unlimited I had tapped into some sort of like unlimited source of like wonder and amazement and power and energy. And I was completely tuned into it. I was like, what is this? And through the research of LSD and psychedelics, it brought me back to the Harvard University studies where Timothy Leary and at the time, Richard Alpert, who became Ramdas, were using LSD. And I started watching interviews and videos of Timothy Leary and Richard Alpert, who I found out became Ramdas. And they were both fired from Harvard for giving psilocybin, which is the active ingredient in magic mushrooms, giving psilocybin to undergraduates in Harvard. And they were fired. And Timothy Leary, you know, went to prison in multiple times and was creating this complete revolution of people using psychedelics. And I'm not going to get too long winded about that. You can obviously look into that stuff yourselves. But it was a whole world that was introduced to me. And in that same stroke, I learned about Ramdas and started studying Ramdas and his use of psychedelics and 
using them for years in his experiences and ego death and spiritual awakening and getting fired from Harvard and leaving to go to India and meeting the guru. I learned about his whole trip through this Chance the Rapper talking about LSD and it was, it all just fell on me, you know what I'm saying? So like I was saying in the beginning of the video, it was around this time of year that this research, I just started researching, researching, doing so much studying of psychedelics and the serotonin system and the psychology of the human brain and ego and ego death and spirituality and spiritual awakenings which brought me in the directions of Buddhism and Hinduism and Taoism and Zen and it all was just, you know, and also through this learning about Terence McKenna, who advocated psilocybin mushrooms and DMT, and that's a whole nother story. Um, it was LSD that really blossomed within my mind and within my soul, you know, not to sound cliche, but something happened and I was caught. I was adhered to psychedelics and what is this? And coincidentally, I need to try this. I need to do this. And I was 16 years old. That's pretty young. For some people, that's too young to even be like smoking weed and drinking alcohol. But I had done both. Never really a big fan of alcohol. I'll just throw that in there. But I had done both. And with the sequence of events of hanging out with Xavier and being introduced to Chance the Rapper... I got to a point where I was like, I'm going to try LSD. I need to try this. But I was smart because I knew. And I, I, you'd think people at 16 years old are just using drugs to get high and have a good time and party and that type shit. But something in me knew. The sort of, just the center knew. This isn't just going to fuck you up. If everything I've researched and everything I've heard and everything I've felt in regards to this is even slightly true this isn't just a drug this is something beautiful this is something very powerful this is something that completely turned America on its side for a period of time which is why it was outlawed eventually and I knew this was a big undertaking of wanting to do LSD, wanting to try psychedelics. And of course, knowing how I was learning how long LSD lasts, the different routes of administration, and hand in hand with all this studying, I um, learned a lot about chemistry and pharmacology, the, the mind and receptors and different affinities to these receptors by drugs and chemicals that are released, dopamine, serotonin, adrenaline, you know, all that stuff, and duration of action and half-life and LD50, which is the dose that when given to, like, rats usually, 50% of the rats die. So the LD50 is kind of like a don't go further than that, you know what I mean? Because if you do, 50% of people that take that dose will die. And learning about all this different stuff, and I, like I said, I felt like I tapped into something like deep and something, of course, that was completely hidden and swept under the rug by the mainstream culture that I was a part of. So it was around this time of year back in five years ago, back in 2016 or 17 or wherever it was month wise, I was like, I'm going to do this. I'm going to try LSD. But before I went and got LSD, which of itself, I didn't even know where, or how to get it. I knew I have research to do. I need, as Terrence McKenna puts it, I need to do my homework. I need to know what I'm getting myself into and be prepared because another thing I'd learned about through Ram Dass and Richard, uh, Timothy Leary was set and setting, which they actually coined those terms in regards to, to the psychedelic experience. 
was the set of the mind and who you think you are and what your intent is and why you're even doing it and the setting being the environment you're in and that you're a part of and who's around and the music that's playing and where you're at, you know, that kind of stuff. So I knew this was, like I said, this is a very big undertaking and it completely washed me away. I was entranced in psychedelics and wow, and trip reports and spiritual awakening. What is this? And I'm not going to talk about my first time taking LSD because LSD was the very first psychedelic that I took and I've made a trip report it on it way back at my channel and it's always fun to uh, rehash and revise and talk about these things over and over again but I just don't really feel like getting in depth of that first psychedelic trip or experience that I had um, but let's just say I, when I did it, when I finally did it, it was everything I imagined that it was going to be and uh, anticipated that it was going to be. It was m magnitudes more than that. It was so familiar. I had been there. I started thinking, Dude, in another lifetime, I must have taken psychedelics. And I've been here before. I know this space. And the way to carry yourself while you're on it, I know this. This is so... This is so familiar to such a deep part of myself. And the visuals and how mentally fried you get. Like, just the, like... I remember being on it and... And hour by hour being like, how am I so fucked up on like, because I was used to just smoking weed to stay high, but I had just eaten this little piece of paper and for hours all day long, I was like, what I called fried, like, what is this? This is crazy. I haven't, I ate a piece of paper at like six in the morning and I am more high than I was two hours ago. Like, what is this, you know? But the vibe that I felt through that, guys, holy fuck. It's why this channel's here. Because I got into psychedelics, and I had the experience, and it completely shattered my perceptions of reality and my perspective of myself and my own personality and how I'm acting like this person and trying to be cool and funny and awesome and I'm I'm everything, you know, you know what I mean? Ego, it showed me, holy fuck, like, I'm a phony. I'm a, I'm a poser, look at me. Look at all this shit in my room. Look at all these clothes I wear. Look at all these decorations, like, what is this? What am I doing? And in a 16-year-old brain, that's pretty intense to be like, who am I? What is this? It's really intense, and don't underestimate that effect that it has on such a young individual, you know? But I had been there before. I knew that space. But it was so strange and seemingly impossible because it was the first time I had ever tripped. But I was like... I've been here. I know this. I know this feeling. I know this space. And if any of you have ever had a feeling like that, let me know because that was like mind blowing to me. It seemed to transcend the the laws of reality, you know? How how is it like I'm having deja vu to a psychedelic trip the first time I've ever had it? What the fuck is this? And just to add in real quick, I mean, not only did I feel like I had taken psychedelics before, I knew that space so, like the back of my hand, like I've been here. This is actually home. I know this. This is so nostalgic. Not only that, but Chance the Rapper and his group of friends and the way he lived his life that he conveyed through his music, I felt like me and Chance the Rapper were friends in another lifetime or an alternate universe where, like, he talks about, like, you know, burn holes in his hoodie and his, 
all of, like his grandma thinks it stinks and all his homies are laughing thinking it's badass and being out late and smoking cigarettes and taking acid and rapping and I was like I felt that same connection to Chance the Rapper and I was just like what the fuck is this I in another lifetime like I was friends with Chance and I took acid with him and like I don't know it might sound crazy but I was like it all felt so tied together and so familiar so distant but so in my heart, like, I know this, and I can't word it any other way. But not only um, did, was I introduced to LSD through hanging out with Xavier, but I also found out what DMT was. I'm pretty sure that was another thing, was like, we're talking about psychedelics. I might have even been on LSD at, at the bakery hanging out with Xavier, but we started, they started talking about DMT, the spirit molecule. And I was like, what the fuck is that? And they're like, dude, this, that's the most powerful psychedelic there is. And they're like, yo, we got to put on this documentary. And they put on literally DMT, the spirit molecule. And once again, I'm watching this like, what the fuck? What is this? Why have I never heard of this? DMT, what is the most powerful psychedelic? It's in my brain. It's in all these plants. It's what happens when we die. It's how we dream. What the fuck is DMT? And not too long after watching that documentary, you know, all it took was me hearing the world's most powerful psychedelic. I was like, Devin, you know what you gotta do. You know the drill. You gotta get this. <laughs> you gotta get your hands on DMT and try it. And that's a whole nother story of itself, you know. I Once I found out about it, I was like, oh, DMT, it's so intense. Ayahuasca, that's so intense. I wouldn't try these things unless I was, like, in my 30s and really felt the calling. But within months, literally within months, I was, it was in my possession and I was contemplating... I want to use this. Should I use this? What, you know, what am I doing here? Is this good? Should I do this? You know what I mean? But yeah, guys, uh, it's very nostalgic looking back on that time and listening to Chance the Rapper or talking to Xavier or hearing any of those songs that I used to bump back in the day. Uh, such a throwback such a throwback and through all that I was introduced to everything I've shared through this channel you know that's where this was born from was discovering psychedelics and spirituality and uh, all the teachers Ram Dass and Terrence McKenna and Alan Watts and the different Indian gurus and saints and yogis and swamis, all of it was in meditation and ego death and th the self. Who am I? Self inquiry. What am I? And this ego, this separate self, everything, it all just came to me. And a while back, I had a friend say to me, Isn't it funny how? you think psychedelics are what started your spiritual journey but we're actually we've all been on our spiritual journey forever and i thought that was really interesting and in a deeper sense if you're watching this in a deeper sense yes that's very that's very true that's how it is if we're going from the standpoint of the soul of this is all the shedding of our ignorance and the shedding of our boundaries and the rediscovery and remembering of love and self and unity and eternity, the oneness and all that. This is every one of you, every one of us that we are on that journey. But uh, as you have probably know, not everybody words it to themselves in that way. Not everybody's even aware they're on a spiritual journey, or this is a spiritual experience. Some people think this is eh, just life, you know, another day, another dollar. They don't even know they're on a spiritual 
they're ha- they are a spiritual reality and the potential inside their hearts and them and everyone and this is life and the beauty they don't even know that and m- more of what i was talking about of how like psychedelics woke me up psychedelics turned me in on myself thus beginning to reveal and remember and learn about oh the self ego spirituality love meditation working on myself you know being compassionate being loving and the realms the psychedelic was revealing me to the psychedelics were the catalyzing moment of my life that made me go from identifying like as a stoner to identifying as like kind of feeling forced to identify as someone who had this like, spiritual explosion go off in his face and couldn't look past it and spent hours and days and months and years studying that and looking into that and continuing to to the degree that now it's just my life it's just this is love this is reality and it's an utter blessing that can't even be refined or distilled down into words it's completely ineffable and i'm learning every single day and it's just it's ha- it's what made me recognize that there is a path we're on and that i have a lot of remembering to do or that i can do and have a lot of studying to do and just feeling so blessed to be a part of it and to have recognized a dimension of such boundless love and power and mystery and wonder and curiosity and childlike profundity like oh wow felt like I was seeing for the first time again after and during all of this stuff you know which sounds so cliche but hey it's they say it for a reason uh so yeah psychedelics how i was introduced to psychedelics was i introduced to psychedelics or did the my karmic destiny determine that i was going to encounter these things and want to do them and then do them and then do everything i've done until here we are right now talking about how i was introduced to psychedelics who knows it's just a fun little thought experiment a fun reflection looking back so nostalgic of how i got to a point where i was like i want to do psychedelics because as you all know that's a big part of this channel so thank you guys so much for watching i hope you enjoyed that story i don't feel like i've ever really shared this in this specifically and as in depth as I did in this video. So I really hope you guys enjoyed this and it shed some light on how I'm a part of this journey and how I recognize this, these aspects of myself and all that jazz. So thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you later.